Hey folks, Sean here. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about why I feel that personas are overrated and an ICP or your ideal customer profile is underrated. Now, one of the reasons why I feel that way is because so much talk and content is produced around a persona, which typically reflects like demographic information, hobbies and interests and things like that for someone who might be interested in your software. However, on the other hand, your ICP or your ideal customer profile gets a bit more intimate and includes a lot more detail, in my opinion. So the reason that why I feel like one is less effective than the other in that why I feel like a persona, which gets most of the attention, is not as effective as an ICP is because it doesn't really get at the root of the use case. That's really the biggest difference here. The ICP is much more specific, much more detailed, and it's actionable. It's something you can actually do with it. A persona, on the other hand, is kind of just like generalities, as in these are some averages between some of the folks that you might go after, so to speak, and market your software to. That's helpful, but it's not the most helpful. The most helpful element to me is what I need to know to figure out what problem I need to focus on solving, how I need to solve it, and how I'm going to measure whether or not I actually did, right? Did I identify a problem we're solving? Did I design and create a solution worth building? And did that solution that I created in my software provide value to the target market customer? This is why I prefer the ideal customer profile, because it really gets at the intricacies of what it is they need, what it is they're trying to do, and it's all around the context of helping them solve their problems. So if you have personas, and let's say you they look like resumes essentially, where you've got, you know, they oftentimes have these like gimmicky names or whatever. It's Susie Sunshine, and maybe you're building an application for parents or households or daycare centers or something like that, right? Daycare centers in the event of building for businesses. And Susie Sunshine is of a certain age and has a certain amount of kids and all this kind of stuff. Like, that's great. Um, I'm not saying that that isn't going to be helpful, but it's not as helpful as understanding realistically what specific problem is Susie experiencing and what type of progress does she need to make. And then more detail about what she's tried to do to solve that problem and why that's been ineffective so that you can better understand how you build a better solution for Susie. That's what really gets into your ideal customer profile. So think of it like a persona. Persona might be a good start or start in that direction, but you're going to probably wind up feeling like you want more in terms of detail when you look at your typical persona. If that's the case, I would encourage you to further explore an ideal customer profile so that you can get into the detail of the use cases for those specific personas to know whether or not your software is adequately addressing them. And if it isn't, your ideal customer profile will give you either the detail that you need in order to make sure that you can close that gap, or it will give you what you need to go get that context so that you can close the gap. Because you need to know not just who is using your software, but everything about them, right? There isn't a limit to the amount of detail that you're going to need related to who's using your software. And the more detailed that can get, the better, right? The patterns are important. I'm not saying they aren't, but in the end, you need to actually deal with real people who are using your software. And a persona doesn't really reflect that. A persona is kind of like an average of who has used your software. The other problem with personas is it doesn't necessarily indicate whether or not you're considering criteria that you shouldn't be. So for example, in that example I just talked about a moment ago, where I was talking about parents and daycare centers. If you have a persona for each, but you're building software for businesses, it's really the daycare center that matters most rather than the parent. Parents more of a consumer, daycare center is the business. So if your personas are taking into account the range between the two of those, you're going to wind up with something even more generic. And again, that's going to give you less detail. The key here is to get more detailed, right? Understand all the details around that use case for a specific target market. And the target market in this case, especially for building for businesses, is more likely to be daycare centers. And while daycare centers and mothers may have some stuff in common, more than likely it's not going to be enough in order for you to figure out how to build effective software to successfully solve 
in a comprehensive fashion their problem worth solving.